How much of an effect do you think that has on, on the general well-being of, of those in the adult industry? Because I know it's, it's, it's a place for, it's a necessary evil. Mm. Oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> but even, you know, if you take away the, the, the bullying and the, the mean comments, when you just focus on how obsessed you can get with how many likes you have, for example, and, oh, well, I put this picture up and it didn't get as many, and am I not looking as good that day? And, yeah, just what, what, how much effect do you think that has on, on the industry at the moment? Uh, and probably uh, I and down and losing all of your followers and I know it's like it, it is fundamental to have social media to, to survive in this industry now um so it's kind of a double-edged sword isn't it because you you know you have to have this social media platform but then again you can it becomes really obsessive and I've, I've ha had it myself and I, I guess to a degree I still have that obsession um, I think it's moved on to my content platforms now more um, the obsession with like gaining subscribers and, and seeing that subscribers go up that's a real obsession for me now um, and it is a kind of validation as well and it can get really unhealthy unfortunately and then again it's tied to my income so it's like it's such a <laughs> it's such a conundrum you know and I'm just um, but then again what I would say is a healthy balance is key and I have also set some boundaries for myself as well I, I um I plan my day now and I have certain periods where I allow myself my social media time to work um you know kind of like office hours um so I'm not doing that all night and all day so yeah I think giving yourself that allotted time um to do those things it kind of cuts out that um you know the need and the addiction because it is an addiction for sure it's just like anything else it's like smoking anything else you pick up your phone all the time because you're addicted to it and so yeah just give yourself a lot of times it, it does help that that was one of the pieces of advice my therapist gave me because you know when when pineapple started I got obsessed with what if, what if I miss a tweet when someone said that they need support or that you know, said they're, they've swallowed some pills. What if I miss that tweet? You know, I think yeah. there's only so much you can do. And yeah. it became, a re yeah, it's sort of having a huge effect on me. And again, it's about your nervous system. We yeah. were speaking about earlier today. Our nervous systems then get set with a high adrenaline. And if we're not... Yeah. Of course, every time we look on mm -hmm. social media, etc., etc., it gives us a little hit, which is that's all good and well. But if you're doing that all the time, it can get very and you lose touch with, with your real friends because you're having dinner with your real friends and staring at your phone. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you kind of lose touch with reality, and I feel like it. It is also um, uh, it. It's kind of a. Oh, I'm trying to think of the words. Um, so self-esteem and self-worth um if you're lacking in self-esteem and self-worth sometimes what you're used as a barrier to the world is you, you'll put your head in your phone and you'll and you'll start scrolling because it's kind of a defense mechanism you know i would sit on public transport i'd be out or or something and if i get nervous and, and feel like oh god um there's a really hot person over there and i don't look so good I, i'll put my head in my phone and then it's kind of it makes it even worse it's a vicious cycle because you do that because you've got low self-esteem and then being on social media gives you low self-esteem so it's like it's just a it's even worse you know there's an avoidance tactic it's not that great in a way is yeah. it <laughs> exactly yeah yeah but what things help i guess increase your you know your self-worth you know just sort of natural things what, what makes you feel good about yourself oh well um I think the realization, I mean, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to realize that your self-worth comes from within and not from outside sources. But then, you know, it is also affected a lot by outside sources. So I think things like um, meditation and also, um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, staying off social media, um, and not becoming obsessed with it because when you obsess over people's looks and and how and, and everything like that and compare them to yourself like comparisons as well you comparing yourself to other people it does nothing you know it does nothing for you um 
so yeah keep away from things like that and um and try and do positive things for sure and try and get away from social media and i mean an hour a day meditation it does a lot for the soul and a lot for a person for sure do you find yourself you know you're saying you're looking on on my only fans all the time do you, do you feel like you are always pushing yourself to work harder and work harder to so to con- not to constantly better yourself, but like you're, if, if you don't, you're going to let yourself down. So if you haven't got that many fans up yet, so I better do some more that, you know, maybe I'm not doing enough. Like like an imposter syndrome type thing, you know, maybe the fans are going because they're realizing that I'm, that I'm not good enough. Um, yeah. That would yeah, be can... there somewhere. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I get that a lot. Like for sure, I, I, I am always trying to, I, I'm always trying to work harder and work better. And I, uh, I guess it, it probably does come back down to self-esteem as well, because it's like I, I'm doing it to, to gain these subscribers. Obviously, I'm doing it to, you know, uh, for financial gain, um, you know, for my career and everything. But then again, it, there is also that aspect where I am. I do have a bit of an addiction to the, the subscribers going up and it does also relate back to, you know, my self-worth for sure. So something that uh, we spoke about with the guest on, on anxiety and it's something I can really relate to that kind of, that imposter syndrome of, I, I can't stop working. And no, 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 I must, I must force myself to do that little, to do extra, even though I'm absolutely shattered because if I don't, then, you know, I'm not good enough or someone will see that I'm not good enough. Or I need to learn, you know, and it, that can get quite, quite damaging. So particularly when I'm run down. Or yeah. Obviously, when you're in, you've been living a nice, healthy life for a little while and positive mental attitude, you've generally got most things under control. But as soon as that starts to dip. And I guess I don't, again, I wonder how much is symptomatic to get what we're all dealing with, just generally in the world at the moment. So I do think there is a higher level of anxiety, which we're all experiencing as well, which is keep on top. And we've got more time because there isn't the time. So we're not going out to restaurants or bars or, or anything. So we're just, yeah. we are all probably working way too much. At the For moment. sure. And I think we're all overworking in our minds as well. We're, we're over overthinking. You know, we've got all this time to like scrutinize ourselves in our heads where we would usually be rushing about and we wouldn't even have time to think. And now it's just we're sitting here like, oh, God, now I actually have a lot of time to think about myself and think about my life. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a difficult time for everyone, I think. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. <laughs> I know that one very well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so just there we go. There goes Joe. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. So we have some little quick fire questions. Complete. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Just to go for it. Um, <laughs> so what's your favorite film? Oh, favorite film, uh, Sucker Punch. Never heard of that. You have to watch it. It's it's quite an alternative one. It's fantastic. <laughs> okay, and the next one. What do people often get wrong about you? Oh, um, what do people? People think I'm a bitch. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. People really think I'm a bitch, and they think I'm mean, but I'm not. I'm nice. It's <laughs> because you dress too fabulously. Maybe. <laughs> <Who knows? laughs> I'm checking out all your apps. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I see My that. little style page. I love that. <laughs> oh, what would your perfect day look like? Oh, perfect day. It would have to be in nature for sure. Um, swimming, sunshine, uh, in my speedos, just lounging around. Yeah, that would be it. And last one. What famous person would you most like to have dinner with? Oh, famous person that I'd most like to have dinner with. I think Michelle Obama, for sure. Oh. Absolutely. (laughs) Fabulous. We need to add to that. I I like this little quick fire thing, isn't it? They're cute. I love them. (laughs) Um, 
Thank you so, so much for coming on the show, Josh, and, and for speaking on the panel. And don't worry, I will be hitting you up again. Oh, no, anytime. I would love to talk about anything because I can talk all day. <laughs> Thank um, you for having me. Thank you. And to any, to any of our listeners, to anyone that's, to anyone that's listening, uh, to, <laughs> <laughs> to everyone listening, uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And if you'd like to learn more about Pineapple Support, please visit pineapplesupport.org or one of our social medias at pineappleysw. Hey. <laughs>